Hi, Claudia here from Create with Claudia, and today I'm going to sh talk to you a little bit about what I learned when I made my first denim quilt. And this is it here on the table. It's a big monster, well it's not really a monster of a quilt, but it's a nice big heavy quilt. I'm going to give you a few specs before I, I begin showing you the nitty gritty. Uh, the first one is, it measures finished about 57 by 72 inches. And it's a mix of all sorts of denim. Some are 100% cotton, some have stretch in them. So it's all sorts of uh, denim jeans that I just had left over that weren't nice enough to donate. Maybe they had some paint stains on them or tears. Um, and I didn't want to throw them away, so I decided to make a quilt. I have made smaller things with denim, like coasters and, and uh, placemats, that kind of thing. Uh, but this is the first quilt I've ever made, and I learned a lot of things when I was doing it. So why don't we get started? So I put this piece of paper down uh, just so you can see some of the things I'm going to show you uh, a little more clearly. Um, the first thing we're going to start with is clean your machine, and I cannot emphasize that enough. I would clean it before you start making your quilt and throughout the process. Maybe every time you change a bobbin, bobbin your bobbin, excuse me, it's up to you, but it really makes a difference. This was after maybe, you know, half an hour of sewing. It, it, this denim, and then I use a fleece backing which you'll see later, denim really uh, puts out the dust and the lint. So clean your machine. The second thing is to wash your fabrics and, and, and dry them. Uh, you don't want to start out making your quilt with a, something that has lots of stains on it. I know my husband works in the garage sometimes and he gets oil on his uh, jeans and stains hard to get out, but you want to get that off so that it doesn't spread to other, other pieces of fabric. The next thing is, and this is another important one, is to use heavy duty needles. I use a blue jean needle. These are just various needles. Um, I use 100 over 16. That's what I use for uh, sewing blue jeans. Uh, some of the jeans I use are pretty thick and tough, and I don't want to use a needle that's going to bend really quickly, sort of like this. And that leads us to number four, and that's change your needles often. Um, this is one, uh, this number one was a thinner needle and it, uh, I didn't change it so it got really dull and it snagged and I was really scared because I, so I have a fairly new machine, it's only about a year old and I was worried because it took a while to get it out of the machine that I, that I had broken something. So use heavier needles and change those needles often so they're nice and sharp. Okay, number five, press your seams open. And I will be honest, in about half of this quilt, I did not when I was piecing the pieces together. Um, but I highly recommend uh, pressing those seams open like so. If you press them like this, it adds a whole nother layer of uh, denim bulk. And this quilt is bul bulky enough, believe me. Um, so that's something I would I suggest doing. And it, let me reiterate, all of these tips are just things that I did and I found really helpful. Um, but everybody makes quilts their own way and I know that, so. Number seven. Number seven is stabilize those jeans. And this is something I did not do when I made this quilt and it made it a little bit harder to piece and it made it a little bit harder to quilt. Everything stretched a lot because I, my daughter in particular has a lot of stretchy jeans and um, they were harder to, to quilt with. They really stretched. So I did a little example here. This is with this sort of 100% nice lightweight, 100% uh, cotton, stabilizer that I put on the back and this is the same fabric so here it is without stabilizer and here it is with stabilizer I mean that makes a huge difference and you can imagine once you're quilting a lot it'll make a big difference so I, I do recommend using stabler stabilizer on the back now I did again I made my quilt without it and it turned out just fine but it's a little bit trickier to sew with number seven uh, slow down and this is just a suggestion for me um, because I like to just sort of plow through quilting and get it done really quickly and that is when I found that's when my needle caught and I find then that it starts skipping a little bit and I it, it's not a good thing so just slow down when you're sewing with uh, denim making your denim quilt another one and I love my fabric scissors believe me but for this I wouldn't use my very finest fabric scissors uh, denim it has some weird property where it just sort of seems to dull blades and I noticed that when I was rotary cutting I really did a number on my rotary cutter um, so I use now I would you definitely need heavy-duty scissors uh, because it is heavy to sew, to cut through 
Okay, the next thing is to think about your backing and your batting, if you're gonna use batting. So hopefully you can see this. I use this yummy fleece backing for my denim quilt. And I did use batting. Um, I used fleece because I wanted to th this quilt to be a nice cozy quilt for our basement, which can get pretty cold in the winter. And I like, I just like fleece. I don't use it very often, so I thought it'd be fun to try. And I debated on using batting or not. Um, I did end up using this really thin 100% cotton batting. I, it, believe me, this quilt pumps out the heat. Um, so it may not be for everybody. And the other reason I liked using the batting, personally, was the seams on the back, and you, can, you can't really see them through here, are pretty heavy. And maybe some people may not like that sort of rougher texture on the back, even with the fleece. Uh, if I didn't have the batting in there, it might still make it a little bit bumpier. But that's personal preference. I just really like the way that turned out. For binding, I ended up using quilting uh, cotton for the binding. I thought about using denim and I thought about using fleece. Denim, I think, would have been way too bulky and too heavy uh, if you used a denim binding, especially the way I do binding. I sew my binding to the front and then hand tack it on the back. Um, and that just would have been too bulky. The fleece, I think, would have been too slippery and too uh, pliable for me. I don't know if I would have liked to do that for the binding, so I decided to use quilting cotton, and it worked out just fine, and I think it adds a nice little decorative touch to the front of the quilt and a nice finish on the, on the sides, or on the edges. Uh, hand quilting versus machine quilting. The only part of this I did by hand was the binding, the back side of the binding. This, uh, my right hand isn't so strong and I've had some problems with it, so I couldn't even imagine hand quilting through this. However, I think it would be gorgeous if you did, especially if you use like an off-colored thread or, uh, you know, a coordinating thread, maybe some really pretty, there's so many beautiful stitches out there, so that sashiko, I think that would be gorgeous on a quilt like this. Uh, it just wasn't my, my cup of tea. Longer stitches. Okay, let me get my paper back. Okay, I did a little example here. Again, a matter of preference, although these shorter stitches, that's where my uh, needle got hung up and bent, the one I showed you earlier. Um, it, I used this larger one. This is, uh, I think, a, a two, two and a half. This was three and a half. I used, I think it was, a, I did use a three and a half, and I really liked the way that turned out. And that was for piecing. And then for the quilting, I used a little bit more narrow. I think this was a three. Um, yeah, it was two and a half, three, three and a half. And that worked out fine. But if you want to use shorter ones, you're going to have to slow down a lot because the, the thickness of the denim with the fleece backing and the batting uh, made it harder to quilt through. So think about your stitch length. Thread is another one. Number 13, thread. I use a 30 weight cotton, 100% cotton for my quilt. I you can use upholstery thread, whatever you want. I do not recommend, though, using a really lightweight thread on this. Again, you know, as you know, blue jeans and denim are heavy. Uh, so this is what I went with. Think about the grain. And I don't always think about grain, even though they teach you when you're cutting fabric to think about the grain and cut along the grain. In this case, I was lucky to get pieces big enough out of the jean legs for this quilt. <laughs> so it was, I thought about grain sort of secondary to just getting a piece that was large enough. The neat thing about it though, especially with denim, is you can really see some of that grain. Like here's some, here's some, there's some going that way. You can see that in those real dark indigo jeans. Um, and it adds it's another dimension, I think, or another yeah decorative dimension to this quilt. And I think it really adds something to it, and I think it looks really nice. So it's just something, to, again, to consider when you're making your denim quilt is grain. And lastly, the last thing to consider is weight. This thing weighs a ton. Well, not literally. It weighs seven pounds. I actually weighed it. Um, but that's a fair amount for a blanket. It's, it's, you're, it's surprising how heavy it is. And I have to thank my husband for all the pictures. He held it up over his head. And even though seven pounds doesn't sound like a lot, when you're holding it up over your head outside in freezing cold weather, um, he was a real trooper. So he held, he was... Um, he's the guy behind the holding up this quilt and it was it, it, his arms were getting sore there at the end So those are my 15 things to think about when you're making a blue jeans quilt or a quilt with denim It was loads of fun to make. I absolutely love it. It's a big cozy warm comfortable quilt uh, 
and I hope you give it a try someday. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.